name's Alex, and uh, I don't even talk. The past owner of the Oxford Chili Chili Company. Um, we're a chili farm in Bristol, just between Bristol and Bath. Um, being a chili farmer, I'm not particularly used to speaking to so many people, um, so forgive me if I'm nervous and stutter or so stupid. But uh, I'll do my best to uh, entertain you and tell you what it's all about. So, the Upton Cheney Chili Company is um, a chili farm. We have 6,000 square foot of polytunnel covered space. Um, we'll pick about 200,000 chilies this year, which will mainly go into our range of sauces. Um, we do a little tiny bit of chocolate, a bit of oil, but it's mainly for sauces. Um, my, my talk is entitled A Year in the Life of a Chili Farmer. And uh, there's only one way to start a year in the life of a chili farmer. And, um, <clears throat> <laughs> so we put that in there and we come back up Sorry. later on. This is my daughter, her name is Jessica, and she's going to help us out today, um, use some pictures to uh, let you know what it's all about and to try and explain better. So, Jessica, show me the first one. This is our chili farm. It's based on polytunnels. Obviously in the UK, we need um, heat, light. But our temperatures are generally too cold to really grow chilies outside. So everything is grown inside polytunnels, and like I say, it's 6,000 square foot. Um, so, the year I've chili farm, January. The first job is decisions. What are we going to grow? Why are we going to grow it? Um, what is end use going to be? So, day one, January, seeds. Where are we going to get our seeds from? What type of seeds are we going to use? Um, this year round, we use Simpson seeds and Sea Spring seeds, um, two really good UK suppliers of seeds. Once we've decided on the seeds, um, we then decide what chilies we're going to grow. So we grow from the very mildest chilies, which in our case is Hungarian hot wax, up to the really hottest chilies, which would be uh, Dorset Naga, Seven Pot, Habanero style chilies. Uh, once that decision is made, We'll then decide what do we need to do this year. Do we need to increase the chili farm? Do we need to uh, build new polytunnels? Do we need to build a big smokehouse? Um, what markets are we going to do? So, kind of January is an is a, is a important time for us because the decisions made in January dictate what happens in the rest of the year. So, once that decision is made, we go on to germination. So, germination takes part. In Jiffy pellets, we have um, eight heated propagation trays. Um, we do it in waves. So we start the first group of chilies. Um, the hottest chilies take the longest to ripen. Up. So the hottest ones will go in first, and as we do our waves of germination, we'll go down to the mildest. See, in about March time. We transfer the uh, jiffy pellets into party cups, <coughs> put a little hole in the bottom of the party cups so there's no water can drain through, and then we place them onto a heated mat inside one of our tunnels. Um, chilies don't like to go below 10 degrees Celsius. Um, they'll, they'll survive for a short period, not for too long. So uh, they go onto the heated mats. Now, it gets exciting in April, May, and June. April, May, and June, we prepare the land, which means we, we rotivate it. Our land is really stony, so we have massive problems of stone, so we're always rotivating. This is my mate Jay from the Clifton Chili Club. It's a bit ugly, but uh, he does a good job. He's quite strong, he's, you know, he's aggressive, and you can see by his face there. So. <laughs> so ground preparation. Once the ground's rotivated, we then build raised beds. And um, the reason for that, chilies don't particularly like to have their roots submerged in water. So we raise the beds for drainage purposes. And you can kind of sorry, you can kind of see where we started to build them in this picture. <coughs> Once we've rotivated and we've built the raised beds, we then cover um, in every, with ground control cover, which keeps the weeds down. And we also put in a leaky hose irrigation system up and down each raised bed. Um, if we were to irrigate each plant individually, it would take forever. So we uh, we, we just turn on this hose and it slowly, slowly irrigates the land. It's, it's not a hard part of the job, the irrigation. This picture is taken in um, May time, and in fact the chap down here videoing put a lot of these plants in here. Um, they literally take over the party cups straight into the soil. Is it, is it going funny? Is it, is it alright? Um, 
So yeah, they go in, in in May time, and by this time of year now, July, August, um, they're pretty large. So we end up with the tunnels looking pretty much like a jungle. Um, you can barely walk between the raised beds. Um, you kind of have to crawl down inside in the, the raised beds to get the, get to the chilies. We don't really feed our chilies. Um, the, the field before was used as a pig field. It was, it was a Gloucester Old Sport pigs in it. And um, they've really fertilised the field really well. Um, so as yet, four years of growing, we've not had to fertilise at all. Um, we use no fertilisers. We, we, so we grow organically. We're not certified organic, but uh, it's, it is grown under those sort of circumstances. Um, for harvest, there's not much to do really. We just stake the plants. They tend to, when they get heavy, they tend to fall over. So we stake them up, hold them up, um, and just really watch them grow until harvest time. Harvest. So from now onwards, the, the milder chilies start to ripen off first. So we'll be picking about 200,000 chilies this year, and we'll continue to harvest all the way through from now until the first frost. So the year just gone was kind of December time, the beginning of December. Um, it's, you know, this was really early uh, frost this year. We got quite badly stung. We lost about 50,000 chilies probably because uh, the, the frost came so soon. So that was quite uh, stressing really. But there's nothing you can do about it. You can't heat a polytunnel. It's, it's too big. Um, so it's just nature's law. You know. So we start harvesting now. So we're starting to harvest Hungarian hot waxes now, jalapenos now. Um, Serrano, we have, we have an organic beef and pork farm. Uh, the Serranos go into our range of hot pig chili sausages. Um, each sauce, each chili has an end destination, depending on what it's going to go into. So they're chosen for that purpose. We also now start to smoke the chilies. Um, chipotle chili is my favourite chili sauce. Uh, chipotle is a jalapeno, a red ripe jalapeno, nice and juicy, which we smoke for 18 hours using oak as the fuel for the smoke. Um, this is our smokehouse. It looks like a shed. <laughs> and it is a shed. <laughs> but it's a shed with a, a um, chimney in it. <laughs> so it's, it's actually a smokehouse. <laughs> we, we cold smoke. We have a um, remote smoker. So the, the actual heat source is outside of the shed smokehouse. Um, like I say, 18 hours of smoke. Once the jalapenos are at 18 hours, we then dehydrate them, um, we crush them all up to make a spice, and then we save that spice for the rest of the year to put into the sauces that we make ourselves on site at the farm. Um, also, in this, this time of the year, so this is kind of now onwards, September we have our, our chili festival, which is no, nothing like this, it's not as big as this, but it's more so a celebration of you know, UK chili farming. So um, there's not many UK chili farmers, uh, I'm one of a few, there's maybe 10, I don't know the exact numbers, maybe 10 chili farmers in the UK. So it's, there's not many people that say they are a chili farmer, and uh, I'm not sure I would ever do it again. <laughs> but it's been fun, it's been a journey, you know. So the, the end of the chili farm year, it's quite a sad time come December, once those first frosts come, the chilies literally just go into a mush, and anything that's left in the plants is horrible. They, you can't pick them, they fall apart in your hands. So we literally rip all of the plants out of the raised beds. We leave the, the chili tunnel until kind of January time, where we take away the ground control cover, and then it all starts again. Re-rotivation, back to germination. Um, and that is pretty much the year in the life of a chili farmer. <laughs> I'd love to answer any questions about UK chili farming. Um, do you find you get a lot of pests and diseases? You mentioned you're organic. Yeah, pests and diseases. Well, fortunately, chilies aren't massively attacked by pests or disease. There, there are a range of pests and diseases. Very luckily on our farm, um, the biggest problem we have is aphids. Um, but we're kind of surrounded by a, a bed of nettles, and ladybirds love nettles, stinging nettles. So as soon as the aphids come in, a few seconds later, so do the ladybirds. So uh, the majority of our aphids are eaten pretty quickly. Um, I, I'm, not a, I'm not a massive expert on chili growing. It was done as a kind of a, 
a hobby kind of bit of fun, and it's kind of escalated to me talking to you lot now, which is a bit strange for me. <laughs> but um, no, we don't have massive problems with pests, so. Uh, so uh, any more questions? Oh, I'll just there. Sorry, no. How do you dehydrate? Dehydrate, right. Well, we um, we have two two ways of dehydrating. The first way, in the summer months now, we have a, 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 like a, some shelves with a net all over them, and we leave them inside the polytunnel where the tunes slowly dehydrate and they dry out over a couple of weeks. But that can only happen this time of the year when the sun's high and it's warm and it's, uh, it's, it's dry. Kind of come October time, um, we have to use like a heated oven. Um, in fact, we use a Bradley smoker. And if you know a Bradley smoker, it's like a small fridge with a heating element at the bottom. We leave it on about 65 degrees, 70 degrees Celsius for about 12 hours with a fan blowing through. And that's enough to dehydrate the chilies. Like a crisp. <laughs> Sorry, this lady was first. Sorry, mate. So, how long do you, like, you know when you germinate yes. the plants, um, can it be the same seed that produces different types yeah. of mildness well, or not, heat? No, um, we, we do um, save our seeds. Um, we're not a specific seed saver, um, but the, 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 the chilies that we pick, we can take the seeds from those and use them in the next year's growing. The trouble with doing that is you, you can get cross-contamination and cross-pollination, so the plant we get might not be what we want, it could be something quite different. So we, we use um, well, we use Simpson seeds for our, for our seeds. And we could potentially, you know, use the seeds that we've But, like, depending on how long you let them germinate, does that depend on, like, the heat that you get out of the... Um, no. Or but, is the seed just a given heat? Yeah, so, okay. you, so you, you'll buy, for example, a jalapeno seed, and it will grow a jalapeno, and the heat you'll get from that seed will be the jalapeno heat. Although there's different strains of jalapeno. Um, heat throughout. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You do get variations on the plant, but not massive swings. Right? Sorry. What the cider connection was. Well, <laughs> this is actually the secret ingredient to being a successful chili farmer. <laughs> it's how the year starts. It's how the year ends. <laughs> so, um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. In the afternoon. Are they self-fertile, or is there any action you take to enhance pollination? Um, no, chilies are self-pollinating. Um, we're lucky enough to have a, a, a range of beehives just in the field next door to us. So the bees do come in and assist with pollination, but they are self-pollinating. So some people give them a jog, a little shake, you know. So if you're growing it at home, get a little brush if you wanted to, just to make yourself feel better about it, like you are assisting. But in fact, there's no absolute need to, to assist, you know, they will do it on their own. Yeah. Thank you.